It's almost like you're being asked to choose between your race and your faith when you're black. No one else is given the same choice. My name is Nabil Abdul Rashid. I do a lot of stuff, um, community-based and entertainment-wise. I'm a participant in the black Muslim experience in the UK and worldwide. I know a guy from round here, just down the street, who went to, a, who went, who, who, who went to an Asian, Asian madrasa. And while he was there, you know what his name was? Do you know what his name was? Kala. That was his name. Kala. He didn't even know what it meant until two years ago when me and him were having a conversation. You want, you want me to send my kids to a madrasa and there's an imam there that... W and this, this, isn't, this isn't one off. Every black Muslim you know that went to a predominantly Asian madrasa will give you a similar story. That's no exaggeration. Ask any black Muslim you know that went to a predominantly Asian masjid has a horror story for you. Why, why is it that racism in Islam is only important when certain people are mistreated, but when the people who get treated the worst of all have a problem, then it's not worth fighting because it's a losing battle? La, because blackness is perceived as something that is evil, wrong, haram, inferior, disgusting, ugly, and I can go on. A lot of guys who somehow are convinced that it's an Islamic to speak about your own narrative and your own experiences as a black person. A lot of these people were naive. They came into Islam with very, very um, false uh, perceptions of what the Ummah would be, expecting to be welcomed with open arms, right? A lot of my revert friends. And they've seen that actually the racism, the systemic racism that you encounter here is not unlike what it was that pushed you to search for Islam in the first place. And as such, you can't look to the status quo Muslims for justice, you have to find Islam. Islam in itself is an esoteric religion. You have to look into yourself sometimes. You always, you always talk about your nafs and, 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 and your fitra. You have to know what your own situation is. You can't sit down and wait for other people to tell you what's good for you. Your opinion somehow is less valid if you're black. How many black stars in Bollywood do you know? Because I mean, if you're okay being subservient and a second class citizen, then it's great. But if like me, you believe that you deserve more, and that you, you know, are greater and come from greater uh, stock than what you're being perceived as in the wider community. If, 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 like me, you challenge the status quo and you call out injustice wherever it is, no matter the religion of its perpetrators, then it can be a bit frustrating. There's almost a, an erasure of black existence from the Islamic narrative here in the West. Um, you find, that depending on what country you go to, black people are almost completely othered or excluded from circles. I mean, before we even talk about the UK, you look at America, the first legitimate black Muslims, the first legitimate Muslims in America were black people. Black Muslims have made the most impact, uh, you know, to Islam worldwide, especially in the West, through media, things like music, sport, political activism. Half the Black Panthers were Muslims, right? So why is it that still when I go into a mosque, you know, here in the UK, I get asked if I'm a revert? by people who descend from people who found Islam maybe three or four hundred years after my people found Islam. But the fact is, if you don't tell people that there's a problem, they won't know. Keep that.